Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcome you to episode 4 of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. And last time we left off very strangely in a spot, well, in a very strange spot I guess, and now we're going to go climb up here and see what Tetra wanted. Ooh, look at that full moon over there. Oh god, it's a beautiful night to have a curse. Or it's a horrible night to have a curse. <laughs> god, that game is so bad. Alright, what do we have here? What were you doing with Nico? No, <laughs> nothing special. Don't tell me you were playing some stupid game for treasure, were you? Nah, that ain't it. Well, whatever. There's something you need to see. Have a look over there. That's the cursed isle known as the Forsaken Fortress. Oh, really? Well, let's just see about that. Whoa. <laughs> it certainly is lit up for such like a fabled, cursy place. There are all sorts of strange rumors about this place. What I do know is that there's the bird up there, and he stole my sister, and he's probably sitting on her now. Ah! And he looks very smug about everything, too. He's got his wings crossed, and he's, like, nodding. Wait, what? Oh, no, did he see me? Oh, God, he's looking around. Something surprised him. <laughs> what the? Okay, that stupid bird. He's tired, too, I guess. But they were just small time. Now the place looks really dangerous. Yeah, it does, with all those big anchors hanging. I knew it! Look over there! What is it? Oh god, it's a searchlight. And birds. The bird, the bird, the bird's the word. I also see hearts on that ledge down there. Have you ever seen so many seagulls flock like that before? Around an octopus, sure. I bet you anything that's the place where they've got your sister locked up. With their octopus? Oh crap. She's in some deep duty now. This won't work. We'd be spotted befo before we got anywhere near landing there. <laughs> Shouldn't they be spotting us right now? Seriously, we're not that far out. What should we do now? <laughs> Want to make out? Oh, <laughs> I guess not. She's winking at me. Oh, this can't be good. Wait, what's this? Dude, I'm in a barrel? Oh my god. I'm not a barrel, man. Let me out of here. How did I even get here? How long was I unconscious for? Look, don't struggle. If you really want to get into a dangerous place like that, this is the only way to do it. Trust me. That's like saying the only way to get to Alcatraz is to swim there. We pirates do this all the time. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll be a piece of cake. What? No, I don't think so. I'm not ready. <laughs> Never you fear, kid. We're pros. We're gonna launch you good. I'm not a cannonball here. Uh, two? Oh my god, look at my face. <laughs> Clenching my teeth. No! <laughs> oh god. Oh, they're waving goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh the splat! <laughs> what just happened? Oh, my sword fell and I peel off the wall like a rotten grape. Oh my god. That's ridiculous, and I fell all the way to the bottom, too. God, could that have possibly gone any worse? <laughs> the Forsaken Fortress. Well, I guess it could have. They could have just launched me clear over the damn thing. At least I made it in. Oh, I'm tired, though. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'd be pretty tired after that, too. Your sword landed all the way up there? Shoot, I'm sorry. I apologize. I guess my aim was a bit... <laughs> you think? Seriously? <laughs> Just a few degrees, maybe. Maybe a splinter or two off. Heh <laughs> I slipped the stone in your pocket just before we fired you over there. It's no ordinary stone, either. <laughs> Apparently not. I can see what you're doing through this stone, and obviously you can hear me through it. So, if you see Spiky A, you better press that button! What is this, the price is right? I put this stone in your quest status screen. Dude, I don't know where that is, it's just in my back pocket. You put it in my butt. Right between my butt cheeks. Okay. So since we don't have a sword, we don't really have any way to defend ourselves. So instead of defense, we're gonna have to go with just stealthiness and try to use these barrels around here to work our way up to the top and see if we can save our sister. The outside edge over here is lined with like five or four rupees or something. And if we're mo really daring, you can actually head towards the center and try to get some rupees. There's like 20 rupees in there. Actually, I think 40 rupees. There's two 20s over here, yeah. But if the spotlight's about to spot you, be sure to just drop still. Oh, because you don't want to be caught moving in one of those things. Otherwise, it's not going to be a pretty picture. 
They should see me anyways, because, like, the light is not just a concentric circle like that. It should emanate and show other things. It's not even that dark out at this nighttime place. Uh, I think I put myself in a bit of a bad spot here. But I think I got it. Your goal is pretty much to get over to this door for right now. Eventually, you probably are going to want to be caught, though, because that's probably the easiest way to get to the second floor. But for now, there's really... You don't have to do that. I think you want to head this way, actually, over to the door. Yep. Oh, we got these long corridors. Oh, that can't be good. There's also these maps on the wall here, so you can actually see where you are and the layout of this place without the dungeon map, which we will be getting here, because this is technically our first dungeon, even though it doesn't look it. It doesn't even feel like it. It's more like a pseudo-dungeon. Oh my god. What? What are you guys? Oh, I thought I left you buttheads back in Malibu. Okay. Yeah. This is more, it's more like a pseudo-dungeon, kind of like the Ice Cavern from Ocarina of Time. But even that was more of a dungeon than this place is. Oh my god. What? Oh, I thought I got away with it too. I thought I was just going to walk right through them. Oh my god, I did that one time actually. I just walked straight through. I didn't stop. I like walked beside the, those guys. <sighs> Crap. Yeah, well that's what happens though. When the camera gets all erect like that and it makes that little dum sound, then you better like stop moving on a dime. I didn't stop fast enough there. They actually do leave you quite a bit of time to stop though. It doesn't need to be instantaneous or anything, but pretty close to instantaneous is good. Not that it matters. Oh, we are on a, we were on our way to this place anyways. Might as well get the pigs to carry us here. And here we have our first special treasure chest. These treasure chests are totally cool. Alright, you got the dungeon map. Press up to view it. And we can't skip this text unlike in the other games. Oh, that's gonna get annoying real fast. Alright. I think you actually want to go down here first there, yeah, because there's this switch here, which will open the next cell. And you're probably wondering, well, why would I want to go into another cell? Is this one more luxurious than the last one? Well, in a way, yes, because of this chest right here. This big spiky chest. Someone could lose an eye on this thing. But this actually contains your first piece of heart. Oh my god, yeah, we gotta collect these bastards again. Serious, I don't want to do that crap, but we gotta, because I'm 100%-ist. Hello! Man, did you see how big his mouth got there when he saw me? Wow. The Moblins' jaws are so funny, that's what those guys are called, Moblins. This is their rendition in this game. And I gotta say, it's probably my favorite rendition of a Moblin ever. Seriously, it seems to just fit them perfectly. Alright, hey, don't do that. Okay, you don't open a door by trying to run your face into the wall next to it. Seriously. Was I saying something? Oh yeah, I was talking about heart pieces. I don't know how many there are exactly in this game. I don't think there's as many as in Majora's Mask, because, well, for one thing, there's a lot more heart, container, heart containers in this game. Don't let your voice crack now. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more heart containers in this game than Majora's Mask. There's probably still like 40 something heart pieces to go in this game though. So that's gonna be fun. Alright, uh, I think we wanna head out here actually. Oh, what do you want? Huh. Listen up, Argon. There's a monster running the searchlight up there. If you can slay the monster, then just maybe, just maybe, it'll shut the searchlight down. Oh, but you're unarmed, aren't you? All you have is a shield? That decrepit old shield? If I were you, I'd try to get i try to use my shield to deflect the monster's blows and see if I can make it drop its weapon. If you did that, you could pick up its weapon with A. Or with your hands. But that's just me. What'll you do? <laughs> okay, Barney. Uh yeah, there's that's one way you can defeat these guys is to steal their weapon from them like that. But there is a much easier way to do it once you actually get up here. Uh there should be Oh yeah. He ca we caught our attention. I mean, we caught his at its attention. These guys won't capture you, though. You don't have to be stealthy around them. Don't worry. But there is... Oh, crap. Don't... Stop it! Okay, well, you broke the pot. No! <laughs> oh, my stick fell. Well, there's still this one. This is what you get for breaking my pot! I did not appreciate that! Rawr! Oh, I'm mad with power. Alright. Ooh, a heart. 
Yeah, so just beating those guys. You don't have to, like, do anything with this control pad or anything. Just beating them will send the searchlight skyward like that. <laughs> skyward searchlight. Nice. Alright, uh, is there anything else? I f actually, I think... Yeah, we can access this searchlight from over here, too. That's kind of cool. I forgot about that. I think that searchlight that we just took down, though, I think that's pretty much the only one that you need to take down. Because, uh, like we saw earlier, there was a searchlight by that window that wh where we think our sister is probably being held. That's the only searchlight you need to get rid of, because if you don't, then you're in for some serious shit. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Nice. Alright, are you going to drop the thing? Yes, yeah, sweet! Oh my god, that's awesome. I got a joy pendant. These these guys drop these things pretty rarely, but they do drop them. These pendants are said to flock to those who spread joy, like butterflies to nectar-filled blossoms. Oh. <laughs> that was my pitiful attempt at Simon's little thing from the Yogg's cast. W whatever. Oh yeah. So expect to see a lot of those joy pendants, because you're going to be collecting... Probably about 70 or 80 of those throughout the span of this whole game. I am dead serious. It's ridiculous, man. Normally, they don't, like, drop them in the Forsaken Fortress. Oh, I thought I could throw that barrel. Didn't realize I would put it on. Yeah, but normally these guys running the searchlights don't drop those ones, so I'm surprised that guy did. I've seen that very rarely. Ooh, what's this? We got another chest over here. Yeah, these chests in particular, like, there's three different designs for the chests in this game. There's this one, then there's a much more curly one, and then there's the spiky chests. Here's the compass, by the way. Very round and big. Yeah, but I think these chests, like, the ones that are designed like that, I think those fit the game the most. Just because, like, it seems like it looks like a sailor chest. I don't know. No, not a sailor's chest. We're not looking for, like, Tetra's chest here. <laughs> no way. Okay. What's out here? Oh, boy. I see the window over there. And it looks like there's no searchlight on it now, so... Obviously, I did that right. Yep, so the searchlight that is on that window is no more, so... You don't have to worry about that. I think there's three searchlights total. You might as well take them all out. If I find the... If I come across the third one, then I'll take it out. Or try to. But for now, I just want to work my way to the top of the map. That's what you're trying to do here, really, is work your way to that big square room at the top of the map. Because that's pretty much... That's how that's going to be your access to the third floor, I guess. It's a big door! God, that door's bigger than our ship. Aha! I've got it, Argon! In order to reach the top of the tower where your sister's being held, you'll have to find your, you'll have to find the room right below the tower. The path to the tower begins at the rear of that room. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Makes sense enough. What is that pirate ship doing out there? Did that one crash? Is that a failed attempt to try and break into this place? All right. Oh boy. We got some s serious stuff to go through now. I was going to say serious shit, but I just exhausted that catchphrase like two minutes ago. Yeah, you don't need to do this right here with this crate, but it's a pretty crate idea to do it because you'll be coming back here later in the game, and this makes just a nice little shortcut that you can use. Oh, yeah. Dude, I could see that bird up there. Holy crap, did you see that? That was scary. Oh, I, th I swear I just saw that bird's head, and he wasn't looking at me or anything, he was looking off in the distance, but it was still scary, because you're just looking right up at him. Whenever you're looking up at something, it's a lot more scary than when you're looking down at it or level with it or something. Alright, so this is the room we want to be in, we want to get to that door that I just showed. And preferably we want to come in from the side that I just came through, from the door that I just came through into this room. If You, you can come in from the other side... But it's a really bad idea because you're bound. You have to like walk past three moblins or maybe two or something. And this way, you just have to walk past one, so it's not nearly as treacherous. As treacherous, treacherous. That's one of those words that you have to use your tongue a lot for treacherous. So whenever, whenever there's a word like that, I sometimes go like treacherous. 
and it makes I don't know. It's supposed to be funny or something, but it's not really. Alright, well, I'm just gonna... I think we're pretty much done for this episode. I know we're almost at the top, and you're gonna hit, kill me for stopping it here. But we're gonna stop it with this most random camera angle I've ever seen. Can I fall off here? Oh my god, I can fall. And I came out of the barrel, too. Wow. Alright, well, next time, we're gonna finish our ascent to the highest room in the tallest tower of this place. So, until then... Thanks everyone for watching, this is Oregon Matrix, signing out. Thank you, and good night.